اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم کمیٹڈ مسلمز بردرز سسٹرز اینڈ چلڈرن ان اسلام السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو لک ایٹ سم آف دا کانٹینٹس آف دی ایٹھ جز اور دی ایٹھ پارا اینڈ آف کورس دس کمپرائزز دا ریمائنڈر آف سورا العام اینڈ اے پورشن آف سورا الاعراف ایز وی لک ایٹ یس ٹڈے سورا العام آف کورس was revealed in the last part of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's mission in Makkah and the same applies to Surah Al-A'raf. Now the Surah starts off with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala saying to the Mushrikeen that even if he were to send angels to them to communicate the message of Allah to them or if he were to get the dead to speak to them, they simply will not accept the message because their hearts are sealed. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you shouldn't worry about them. Guidance only comes from Allah. And whomsoever Allah wants to guide, he, will, he or she will get guidance. Otherwise, these people's hearts would uh, remain uh, sealed. Now, an arm, of course, uh, means animal so, or animals. And of course, this surah uh, takes its name from from the animals aspect because in it uh, the mushrikeen had developed certain strange habits and they would say that we are going to eat a certain part of a an animal's uh, meat and not other parts or we are going to eat certain grains and not other grains these are totally arbitrary superstitious uh, you know decisions or practices that they had adopted which had absolutely nothing to do with divine teachings And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala corrects this and says that this is not what Allah wants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then clarifies that uh, Muslims should not eat any animals uh, that are not sacrificed in the name of Allah. And they should only eat the meat of those animals that are sacrificed in the name of Allah. Now it's a delicate point. It needs to be understood properly as to why it is necessary that we shouldn't eat meat even if it's slaughtered properly, but if it is not slaughtered in the name of Allah, then we shouldn't consume its meat and only consume the meat of those animals that have been sacrificed in the name of Allah. The reason is that Allah gives life and it is in his name that we can take life even for our own sustenance. So it's very important that we keep this uh, in mind. Secondly, that um, Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and reminds the mushrikeen that uh, punishment will come to them not on their time scale but on Allah's time scale. And then this surah ends uh, in, in 10 points. This can be actually considered to be uh, guidelines or signposts for our existence. And I think everybody should read them and understand them carefully. Uh, it starts off with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, do not associate partners, partners with Allah. And then the second point that you should respect your parents. The third, that do not kill your children for fear of power, poverty. Fourth, do not kill unjustly. We had seen this earlier on as well. Fifth, that when we uh, give uh, or any, any, we sell anything, for instance, we are sen- selling some commodities, Allah says, do not cheat in that. Give the full measure. Don't cheat. Because unfortunately, there is uh, a practice among some people that they try to cheat um, other people. And then Allah prohibits um, fahish or lewd talk or behavior. Regrettably, this is very widespread in society. So we always have to be very, very careful about it. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we must always be just and kind to orphans. We must look after them. And of course, needy and, and destitute people as well. And the surah concludes with a very, very beautiful uh, du'a. Uh, I think it's something that we need to keep in mind when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in, in this surah. Uh, and, and the du'a goes like this. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajeem Qul inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. So he says to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell the people that say that my salat, my prayers, my struggle and my living and my dying are all for Allah who is the Lord of all the worlds. So this is the attitude that Islam 
conveys to us this is the conduct that we must be uh, pursuing and um, participating in. The next surah, uh, uh, Surah Al-Araf, which, which, which begins in uh, this um, particular juz, in the eighth juz, uh, which is also, Surah Al-Araf is also from the Makkah period. It starts off with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warning us, and of course at that time the mushrikeen, but through them, us as well, of the destructions of earlier communities. Now, the Mushrikeen in Mecca were familiar with uh, these uh, earlier communities because they were traders. They used to leave Mecca and in summer they used to go to Syria uh, via Medina and in winter they would go to uh, Yemen and to Iraq. And so when they went uh, northwest towards Syria, there are many communities that were destroyed there are the people of Ad and Thamud. Uh, the ruins of these societies still exist today. And if anybody wants to see them, they can go and have a look at them. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned these mushrikeen that just like previous people were killed, destroyed, you would be destroyed if you do not rectify your um, erroneous conduct and behavior. So it's, the, it's a very, very powerful warning to all of us that we should be uh, conducting ourselves in a proper way. And then, of course, the, the surah also talks about the story of creation and Iblis's rejection of Allah's command to bow to Adam, alayhi salam. And, of course, he's banished from um, paradise. And then Allah reminds us that good deeds would be revo uh, rewarded and bad deeds uh, would be punished. And there is also, of course, a very um, detailed description of heaven and hell. And then, once again, in this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us about the creation that means the natural creation which is the trees the rivers the, the forests the mountains the winds uh, and so on uh, in order to invite us to think and reflect that all of these things are from allah human beings have not created them when it rains obviously human beings uh, have no control over it when it snows, human beings have no control over it. These are all from Allah. There is a higher authority and we ought to be cognizant of these things. And then, of course, um, there are uh, stories from many of the other prophets. For instance, the prophet, prophet Nuh, Hud, Saleh, Lut, Shoaib, they were sent to various people to try to rectify their behavior, but regrettably, they refused and for that, of course, um, they were punished. Their communities were destroyed. And we hope and pray, inshallah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would protect us from his uh, punishment and from his uh, azab because that is very, very se severe. And, and may Allah keep us on the right path, especially in this month of Ramadan. Thank you for listening. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.